So I just had a salty game where I went 1 in 12 as Kog'Maw because my Karma refused to pick Lulu and Champ Select. She gave me an ultimatum, either Karma or Lux, even though she had Lulu. Proceeded to int my ass off, and now I'm here reflecting on my choices of where I went wrong by even thinking about picking Kog'Maw if my support isn't going to pick Lulu. So that spawned an idea to create this series called Does the Kit Fit? Featuring Kog'Maw, the Mouth of the Abyss. So Gogma is a champion that's near and dear to my heart, where he was the first champion I ever played when I got into this game. <laughs> Back when times were innocent, I didn't get stressed out every time I played, I booted up League of Legends. Now, something that's interesting. Here's, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to talk about the champion's lore, the changes I'd make to the lore, the character design, and the kit, and how does it fit with said champion's character design, and what changes I would make to the kit. Now, the reason I'm choosing Kog'Maw is because he's a in he seems very inconsistent as a character. I noticed this when I was playing the game. I noticed it a long time ago, but now, as the game evolves more and champions get more and more complex, and with every rework and release, Kog'Maw just stands out as a champion that just, I don't know, that kind of got left behind a little bit. And I want to talk about why because I find it interesting and talking about it is much more fun than playing League of Legends nowadays so let's get right into it so Kog'Maw's old lore was it, it pretty much goes like this Malzahar slipped walk into the Shuriman desert wandered all the way to Akathia found religion and pretty much is spreading his gospel around Runeterra right and a little while afterwards the void farted and yeah, that's how we got Kog'Maw. Now he's roaming around Runeterra looking for Malzahar. <laughs> and the thing about that is, we don't know why Kog'Maw was looking for Malzahar during that time. It's just something that was in the back of his mind. He's like, hey, you should totally find this guy, go get him. And we don't know why. I came into this game at around uh, the end of Season 4, around Season 5. So I got to experience Kog'Maw from what he was before. Until the, abs until the absolute travesty of what he is now. So, in, on Kog'Maw's side of the story, he pretty much is roaming around eating everything until he finds Malzahar. So, that's his old lore. And uh, Kog'Maw hasn't really had any updates to his new lore. Nothing's really changed. The only one who's had any changes was Malzahar, and that was just to give him a little bit more depth as to his life before he became the Prophet of the Void. So, this is one of the first changes I would make. Kog'Maw's... Kog'Maw is pretty much like the void... The, a puppy, right? But his design doesn't reflect that. So in his lore, just to make it make a little bit more sense, I would actually make Kog'Maw, pre-Kog'Maw, a puppy, right? And just to give him more depth, make him Malzahar's pet. Yeah, just, just make, just make Kog'Maw Malzahar's pet get like a pet dog or something that Malzahar loved and followed him everywhere. Keep Malzahar's lures the same, just have the addition of Kog'Maw before he was actually like Void Kog'Maw and actually have Malzahar sacrifice the puppy, you know, puppy Malzahar to the Void to open it because, you know, Malzahar was like one of the first to go back to the uh to Akathia, pretty much where Jack's lore starts and whatever and open it. Have Malzahar sacrifice Kog'Maw to the Void right because that would that would be in line in what we know because the void is the void only grow it's like cancer it only grows when you feed it right feed it nutrients like life it consumes life so it can get bigger which is what happened in Kaisa's story when she released the goats and pretty much doomed her village to die because the void woke up and it got hungry and just consumed everything so that would be in line what we know and then have the same thing happen later on where Kogma is pretty much farted out of the void make it so that the puppy like evolved it was consumed by like a void critter or whatever and then it evolves into what we see now this Kogma. that's just to give his lore a little bit more flavor because right now it's pretty boring he's this generic thing right and he's supposed to be like this void puppy. Now you can actually call him a void puppy. He's just a mutated puppy. 
So that'd be a little bit more in line. As far as the changes I would like to see in Kog'Maw's lore. Now let's go to Kog'Maw's character design. He doesn't look like a dog at all. <laughs> he has a joke skin called Pugmaw. Where he is literally just a, just a dog. Let's see it. right even though this is a joke skin this is this is the idea of Kog'Maw right now right now I say this because Kog'Maw stands out because Kog'Maw was created back in the day where void creatures didn't have a set aesthetic at the time I think Kog'Maw was one of the first ones uh, besides Cho'Gath notice how Kog'Maw is green and you have other void creatures, say like Cho'Gath, Kha'Zix, Vil'Koz, who have a... Oh, and even Kaisa, since she hails from the Void, Kassadin as well, that have a similar aesthetic to each other and that they are purple. But Kog'Maw sticks out because he is green. <laughs> right? So he already doesn't follow that. And he's just like this bug thing. He looks like a caterpillar. He looks like a caterpillar, right? Now... My hand, my head cannon for this was Kogma. The idea for Kogma may have he may have been originally supposed to be the early stages of this, a Baron Nasher, right? Because Kogma in his lore, he's hungry and he eats a lot of stuff. Yeah, so he's just eating and eating, and they play on that by giving him other skins that kind of reflect that, like. Monarch Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw eats enough, eventually it's gonna cocoon and turn into this thing. A beautiful butterfly cog. Right? But it'd be more likely he'd turn into this once he's eaten enough. This is just my just this is just my hit cannon. So Kog'Maw's character design is just is strange to me. And I feel like it should reflect more of the void aesthetic if he ever does get a visual update. Which I'd say Kog'Maw's fine how he is, but he could be better, right? Because another theme that Void creatures share is that, or the Void itself, the Void and its cre the Void itself and its creatures share is that they, when they kill something, they consume it and they take on the characteristics of what they consume. Kha'Zix being a perfect example, the Void Reaver. You know, he kills uh, and he like gets sharper talons, sharper scythes, right? Um, he gets larger wings if he kills birds, and even in his lore, he took on those characteristics. Now, the thing about Kog'Maw that bothered me the most, Kog'Maw doesn't have a proper passive. <laughs> like, it's so counterintuitive to what you would think Kog'Maw would be, right? His path, his current passive is called Ikathian Surprise. So basically, when Kog'Maw ints, he pretty much turns himself into a nuke and he gains some attack speed and runs at the nearest champion, and explodes, it, like a like a kamikaze. The whole goal is to try and take them out with them. But as an ADC, an immobile ADC, Kog'Maw isn't supposed to isn't supposed to die. So the suicide bomber tactic is really out of place, and so. I got to experience Kog'Maw when he was, I'd say he was at his most funnest, <laughs> when he was when he was pretty much a Gatling gun, when his attack speed cap reached 5, like he could exceed the attack speed cap and he'd just have 5 attack speed, not the current cap 2.5 but just 5, which was awesome, right? Back where you could just build a bunch of attack speed items on Kog'Maw, stand still and you insta win. That was the funnest iteration of Kog to me that I got to experience. Now, Kog'Maw's been nerfed and changed over time to the point he's not even fun to play unless you... He's borderline unplayable unless you have Lulu. Riot's been taking him in a direction where they buff him. Where, they, where they've buffed AP Kog'Maw. So he's kind of living up to that living artillery fantasy, but it's a pretty niche playstyle. So, here's my ideas for changing Kog'Maw. Let's go over his kit real quick. Ikathian Surprise already covered. Kamikaze move. Caustic Spittle. It's just a it's just a regular Q move with passive bonus attack speed, but it shreds armor and magic resistance for four seconds once it hits. And it has a decent AP ratio. And decent 
Yeah, it has decent scaling. Bow, Arca Bow Arcane Barrage is pretty much Kog'Maw's bread and butter ability. Uh, the, the, the ability that Kog'Maw's known for. Stand still, auto attack, he does percentage max health damage. In AP. It Void Ooze. Eh, pretty much vomits on the ground and it slows enemies. In Living Artillery, which is Kog'Maw's ultimate, pretty much turns himself into a, like a cannon. And, you know, he just, yeah, just turns himself to an, into a cannon. It's a skill shot, and it increases based on missing health. Now, the main thing I would change about Kog'Maw is his passive, Akathian Surprise, since it doesn't fit at all. Kog'Maw's whole power fantasy is supposed to be like this, this, this machine gun that's supposed to mow down enemies. But if we were to, if we were to update Kog'Maw and bring him in line into what, you know, the current void creatures are and supposed to be, I would make Kog'Maw adapt based on what he eats because his whole lore is him can hit him having an insatiable curiosity about the world he lives in and trying to understand it in the only way he know how he knows how which is consuming it when you compare it to other champions like uh, Vilkos for instance and how their passive fits into their kit Vilkos analyzes and he studies whatever it is he's fighting and he ends up finding and exploiting their weaknesses, hence that's how we get true damage from Vilkaz literally breaking through their defense because he's had enough time to study it. And Kaisa, take care friend, says she gets the percentage max health damage on hit uh, when she gets five stacks, but she also does uh, she also keeps in line with the void with the void theme of you know transformation and evolution by leveling up as uh, by leveling up her abilities as as the as the game goes on. I'm sorry, evolving her abilities as the game goes on. She gets stealth, bonus attack speed, more missiles, just a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything in her kid, even a shield, right? And mobility. So she's like Vayne 2.0, but Kog'Maw has been left behind. So here's the changes I would make starting with this passive. Instead of calling it Ikathian Surprise, Let's call it something a little bit more fitting, called Caustic Curiosity, right? Because in, Co in Kog'Maw's lore, in his splash art, he pretty much just ate Helmet Bro. His whole theme is based off of eating things to understand it, right? And he has like the, these the, these caustic enzymes leaching, leaking from his mouth, scorching the ground that he walks on because it's that deadly. But Kog'Maw doesn't have a single thing in his kit that reflects his 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 gluttonous nature whatsoever right now compare that to someone like Nunu who literally takes a chunk out of whatever it is and it does you know it does damage just without the change it heals and does does damage now how would I make caustic curiosity let's let Kog'Maw live up to the power fantasy he was supposed to he was supposed to you know that's presented in his lore Let's let Kog'Maw evolve based off of what he eats, right? Let's, all right, so let's let Kog'Maw, let's make him more fun by making it actually fun to interact with his environment because the funnest champions are ones that are, that are, that unlock, like in the first three levels. Like I base, I base if a champion is good or not based on the access it has to his kit without ultimate right say Yasuo he's one of the funnest champions in the game one of the most frustrating but one of the most fun right because you unlocked all of Yasuo's kit at level at level three you know you have his Q then you have his wind wall which is this defensive move and then you have his dash right which is satisfaction now if Kog'Maw's gonna get to not have any type of mobility and not have any type of defensive stats whatsoever to help him like to help him during the game the least he can have is a proper passive that reflects you know his his champion thematic right and it says it's the mouth of the abyss it's not living up to that i would say this should be kogma's epithet living artillery so here's what i would do to make kogma fun when the game starts kind of like a checkbox you know how you have like stacks of stuff like uh Say for, hmm, let's use Rengar for an example, how he gets bonus stats by going around killing champions, right? 
Rengar's a hunter, so that's that fits perfectly. He's a headhunter, right? So that fits perfectly with Rengar's thematic of going around and collecting the bounty and heads of, you know, different champions, and he gets rewarded for doing so. Let's let Kog'Maw do the same by interacting with, with his environment, because Kog'Maw's one of the original hypercarries of this game, like the OG hypercarry of the game. Right? So... How would, how would we do that? Let's let Kog'Maw scale based on what he eats, right? So let's do it like this. We have red buff, right? Kog'Maw has pretty basic abilities. If they're never gonna rework Kog'Maw to having an attack speed of five, let's let Kog'Maw kill, like pretty much what Ka Kha'Zix says, kill, consume, and adapt based on what he eats, yeah? So, let's have Kog'Maw get various types of abilities or stat increases based off of what he eats like say red buff for instance you know how it gets uh gives crest of cinders that pretty much like burns and does true damage wouldn't it be interesting to see how kogma eating certain red buffs throughout the game not i'm not talking about just one i'm talking about like say if kogma were to eat like what five red buffs throughout the game he would get an increase to one of his uh to one of his abilities say like caustic spittle let's let that do uh po let's let that do like poison damage because notice how caustic spittle shreds armor and magic resistance right let's have that do do that over time and kogma is actually rewarded for landing the skill shot that can be blocked right or yeah and the champion loses like health over time Ca similar to cassiopeia q That'd be cool. Or if you don't put it on this, you can also put it on Living Artillery right here. That way, Kog'Maw will be rewarded, you know, for landing his skill shot. But I think it'd fit more on Caustic Spittle. Right? So that's just with red buff. Now, so what if Kog'Maw were to eat, say, like, two blue buffs? Let Kog'Maw get either a flat amount of mana increased. So, say, like, a... Um, whatchamacallit, a mana flow band, you know? You know, I think that'd be decent because that'd be more reflective of, you know, Kog'Maw ate blue buff, he ate a certain amount of blue buff, say like five of them. I don't know. I'm not a math guy. You could figure out a fair number, but now he has increased mana regeneration. Because if we go here, Kog'Maw's mana is decent on his Q, but everything else, say like his, uh, his Void Ooze, costs 120 mana right and Kog'Maw's uh his R living artillery consumes more mana the more he launches it yeah it's based on cast 40 to 400 so I'd say if he were to consume blue buffs this will just give him you know like more casts of his uh his living artillery because I'm, because my redesign of Kog'Maw is based off of him being the machine gun he was meant to be. Well, not necessarily machine gun, just the living artillery he's supposed to be, in my opinion. So, after blue buff, say like if Kog'Maw were to consume Scuttle Crab, Kog'Maw has no abilities in his kit that give him mobility, right? So, if we're basing Kog'Maw, if we're upgrading Kog'Maw, Kog'Maw based on what he eats, you know? What does Scuttle Crab do? It has high it has high base armor, high health, but Scuttle's iconic ability is what it's known for. It's it's known for dashing, right? So say like if Kog'Maw were to kill say like five Scuttles during the game, right? He would get a not not even a dash, a movement speed increase based off of uh based off of uh how many how many auto attacks he, you know, does on a champion. So think uh What's that called? Nimbus, not Nimbus Cloak, Phase Rush. Pretty much exactly that, a Phase Rush ability. Give Kog'Maw that. That way that'll increase Kog'Maw's kiting and it'll help out with his positioning, especially during team fights, since Kog'Maw doesn't have any type of mobility in his kit until <laughs> after he dies, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. Now, another thing I find a little frustrating is how 
Every champion has some form of mobility except Kog'Maw, and we have a perfectly good ability right here that's just begging to be upgraded called Void Ooze, right? It does a deceptive amount of base damage as you level it up, but this is the last ability you would level up on Kog'Maw, right? Unless you're, build unless you're playing AP Kog'Maw, but this is the last ability you level up because it's kind of useless because the slow is not very effective because champions have dashes and uh and speed ups nowadays so this isn't that good it used to be good in the past where where um champions didn't have that many mobility spells in their kits but we've been mobility creep so the simplest change to make to this the simplest and most effective change was is to add it do what they did to singed and add grounding to void ooze right that way it gives kogma time to land his, you know, to land his auto attacks without, you know, instantly getting dove by the enemy Zed. Or, you know, anything else with the mobility spell, the enemy Katarina, you name it. Right? Hell, and you can even give it an added effect if you were to combine it with, like, red buff. Like, say if Kog'Maw, like, eight five red buffs throughout the game, he gets a permanent buff, you know, called Crest of Cinders or something, where it does uh, damage over time. Kind of like a Cassiopeia Mighty Asthma. My Asthma. Now, moving on to the next thing. So, give him a Phase Rush type passive if he were to auto attack that champion a number of times while he has, like, what, five Scuttle Crabs. Next, we have Gromp. So, what would happen if Kogma were to eat Gromp? At least, eh, just give him five times. And the reason I'm putting a five cap on it. It's because I'm considering how uh, how this would affect the 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 jungler on your team, right? They wouldn't they would be pretty mad if you were go around go around and eat their jungle, unless you were to play Kog'Maw in the jungle, which is perfectly which would be perfectly viable. Kog'Maw, the only thing stopping Kog'Maw jungle from being very good is how vulnerable he is to ganks. But he has the um, but he does have the range with his W. I've seen it work in the past. Uh oh, what happened? Uh oh, something happened to the model viewer. Let's see if I can refresh this. Okay, so what I would do for Grump. If Kog'Maw were to eat five Grumps, I would let Kog'Maw, uh, pretty much what Grump does in the beginning of the game, like every time you attack it, how it does like crit damage based on like on hit for the first couple auto attacks, just as simple as that, just let Kog'Maw, just let Kog'Maw get crit for his auto attacks, um, while his W is active, let those first, let those first couple auto, auto attacks with his Bow Arcane Barrage crit, right? just like Gromp does so if we move on to the next one Krug now they're like say once you break open the first Krug first couple Krugs there are 10 Krugs in total if you count the mini Krugs as well just simply put let Kog'Maw get a flat amount of armor and MR for killing 10 Krugs right and the reason I'm saying a flat amount is because I wanted to syner synergize with uh, with dragon buffs once it gets once we get to the dragon to the earth dragons, right? So that's simple enough. Kog'Maw gets rewarded for you know killing Krugs and he gets armor for it as well. I don't know what I'd do with MR, but you know you have rock-like creatures right here. Just make Kog'Maw more hardier. And hell, you can even let it reflect in Kog'Maw's model by just giving him a harder texture based on how many uh, Krugs he's killed. But, you know, a right is less work for them, so I guess that wouldn't happen at any point. So, if we were to go over here to Raptors, I call them chickens. So, what would happen if Kog'Maw were to kill chickens? There's nine chickens in the pit, right? So let's say Kog'Maw kills like three camps of chicken. Let Kog'Maw, let's give him like a, a gargoyle stone plate effect. Kinda. So, reward Kog'Maw for being around his team. Like, 
because Kog'Maw is vulnerable as it is, it would be cool if Kog'Maw were to get an effect where if he's in a team setting, like say you have like four other members with your team with your three other members with your team with you, let let Kog'Maw get damage reduction. <laughs> that sounds nuts, but let Kog'Maw get damage reduction based on his proximity to his team if he's in if he's in a team fight, given how squishy Kog'Maw is. I personally wouldn't give Kog'Maw any type of magic resistance. Uh, I'd only give him armor based off of, uh, you know, killing the, the Krugs right here. Because ADCs have, like, the lowest base magic resist in the game. So, you know, don't want to make him too OP. Now with that, let's bring, let's bring us to the dragons. So, let's make living artillery just a little more interesting of an, of an ability. Now, say if we were to go... We're at creatures. Let's go to the water dragon. Right? Now, if Kog'Maw kills and consumes the water dragon, let's give Kog'Maw's, uh, his R, living artillery, the ability to do, to have bonus effects based off the dragons he's killed. Right? So say like, if Kog'Maw were to kill the water dragon, sure you would get the dragon buff of regenerating, what, 2.5 health? That's just the standard. But if Kog'Maw were to kill it, it would let his living artillery uh, strikes slow, right? Now that might be kind of weird because if you were building AP Kog'Maw, this would be a strict buff to AD Kog'Maw because I know AP Kog'Maw, so they like building uh, Rylai's Crypto Scepter for the health, the AP, and the slowing effect. But if you were to kill this, you would get that effect because, uh, whatchamacallit, Ocean Drake's autos they slow you and in fact when i'm playing a game ocean drake is the unless we have tanks on the team absolutely despise fighting for ocean drake just because how detrimental its autos are especially when team fights break out it's quite inconvenient especially when i'm playing an immobile adc like kogma it's kind of a death sentence fighting for this dragon if you don't have the right comp for it so that's the only change i would make to that now say like if we were to move to something like the earth drake right i can't really think of any of any abilities that would go great for having the earth drake i'd say its ability to double your armor and magic resist is good enough just because i'm thinking about if kogma kills enough krugs he'd have a decent amount of armor right it make him kind of like a walking tank right so if he were to get a percentage increase based off the flat increase you got from killing the crooks that would be that would just make this drake even better for a kogma and very tanky as well now if we move towards the wind drake if kogma were to kill the wind drake let's let kogma let's we're, we're still on uh, Kog'Maw's Living Artillery. It's already on a pretty short cooldown once you once you get it down. So I think that's cool. But the only thing I can think to make it kind of interesting is to make make the um, shots fire just a little bit faster. Like a, a, a percentage faster. Like once you press R and the time it takes to hit the ground would be decreased. I think that'd be pretty strong. But at the same time... Like, having a Kog'Maw on your team, that's a win condition in itself, right? That's why we have Protect the Cog comps, right? So, if Kog'Maw, it would put more incentive. If Kog'Maw's gonna get dove anyway, at least make him, you know, at least let him be the threat he's supposed to be. Instead of, you know, just the obligatory, oh, go for Cog, just because he's there. It'd make it like, no, Cog's a threat, he needs to be taken out, you know? If he's gonna have, if you're gonna have all that pressure on you while you're playing the champion, make it worth it let a um, living artillery hit the ground faster like its cast time is reduced i think that'd be fair and mind you these buffs are based completely off of rng if kogma were to kill three of the same dragon let it benefit kogma in a noticeable way and now that brings us to or is it the fire drake like the most sought after drake in the game more damage more problems 
Now, if Kog'Maw were to kill the Fire Drake, I I would I would feel that just letting, um, you know, the bonus damage that Fire Drake gives you on your first attack, let it apply to Living Artillery so it hits harder, right? I think it'll synergize with it well because once Living Artillery lands, it'll do bonus damage. The lower the health, that's forty. The lower the health an enemy has, the more damage this does, right? And it doubles against enemies with 40% maximum health. And it goes up to 400 per cast, so... I think that'll be pretty good. Because I believe it works... Does it work? I believe it works with uh, passive abilities as well. And so it won't be too OP. You can even make it so, like, oh, it's only, like, the first three, uh... The first two, like the first two hits, that's fair. First two or three hits. So, and last but not least, Elder Drake already has an OP ability. It's an execute at a certain point. If you have a Kog'Maw on your team and he has Elder Drake, that's terrifying. So the last change I would make is to the big dog right here. Makes Make something happen if Kog'Maw were to kill Baron Nasher, because Kog'Maw's a void creature. It's still my head canon that Kog'Maw is meant to turn into a Baron Nasher once he's gotten enough to eat. Once he's like consumed enough, then he'll go into like a metamorphosis, right? So what, thematically, what should happen if Kog'Maw were to consume a Baron Nasher? The same, the same look he has whenever he dies, the animation is on, isn't on here or else I'd show it. Let Kog'Maw go through a metamorphosis. Let him change. Let him, like, get more spikes like the Baron Nasher has. Let him look more grotesque as a champion and turn him purple. <laughs> and not only that, let Kog'Maw... So Baron Nasher's special ability, it does, it does more damage to champions attacking it from behind, right? And it also reduces uh, it also reduces damage taken, the damage you do in general. So if Kog'Maw land, I would I would say if Kog'Maw were to get a permanent buff from killing a Baron Nasher, let it affect Kha'Zix's, I'm sorry, um, Kog'Maw's Caustic Spittle for him landing it, right? Sure, it does magic, like it shreds armor and magic resist. Let it also reduce the damage that a Kog that a, a champion would be dealing during a team fight. I think that'd be pretty significant on an eight second cooldown. That seems pretty broke, but I'd say that's fair because Kog'Maw still doesn't have any quote unquote mobility in the game. Unless he's killed a certain amount of Scuttle Crabs and he gets a phase rush ability. So I'd say my changes are interesting. So I would say, <laughs> I would ask, the next question would be, what's the verdict on this? Is it balanced? No, <laughs> absolutely not. That that would give Kog, like, the main argument would be, that would give Kog'Maw an overloaded kit, right? Was, like, I could see people complaining, no, you shouldn't reward Kog'Maw like that. Like, he'd have too much in his kit. I'd say, no, that'd be perfect for Kog'Maw because at the moment, he doesn't feel that satisfying, at least to me. He doesn't feel like he's living up to that hyper-carry fantasy. He feels bland and generic, and he feels left behind by everything else. So, letting Kog'Maw scale throughout the game by doing what he was meant to do, like lore-wise, and consume everything, that sounds dope to me, you know? And it's not like he's getting strong out of the blue. Like, if you let it, like if you don't end the game while Kog'Maw's on the enemy team and he's just farming, like, you know, how you're supposed to get strong in the first place, by farming uh, the enemy jungle, you know, the jungle on your side and the enemy jungle as well, and you let Kog'Maw get to that point and he's consumed like everything the Rift has to offer, that's your fault if you can't end the game before then. Kog'Maw should be a legitimate threat. Like back when Kale was good, like you don't let Kale scale for free, you know? And if Kog'Maw's gonna be this vulnerable without a Lulu on, <laughs> on his team, then I feel like Kog'Maw should be rewarded for it. And that'll make him much more satisfying to play. So other than that, nope, the kit's not balanced, but is it fair? 
yes, because it lets Kogma fulfill the power fantasy of being this, like, of being living artillery. Right? He gets what he needs through consumption, based through consuming whatever it is on the is on the rift. And hell, if he even wanted to gate his power, make it so give him the Rengar effect. Make it so like he only gets low values based off the champions you've killed. You have to kill <laughs> pretty much Rengar's hunt system. Let him let those values scale up based on a percentage, based on how many unique individual champions he has killed in the game as well as jungle camps. That's the only way I can see that being balanced. It'll reward good Kog'Maws for getting killed and working with their team, as well as doing what they're supposed to be doing any anyway, which is farming to get strong, so he can get items as well. That's how I would change Kog'Maw. <laughs> so, if you've liked what you see and you wanna see more, uh, comment what you think the next champion should be for, uh, for this series is it balanced does the kit fit um i know there's a couple champions a couple other cha champions that i wanted to get to kim kindred in particular is a champion that i feel doesn't really live up to her to her fantasy of being the grim reaper and i'm uh kind of waiting to get to her but if you have a champion that's on your list that you want me to review and see if their kit fits you know based off of uh you know their character design and their lore and their current kit let me know in the comment section i'd be happy to cover it but until then i will see you later and i hope you enjoyed this series